Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. So glad you could attend. Come inside today as we take a look at Riddick, the latest in Vin Diesel's sci-fi franchise about the man who can see in the dark. Now, we get Riddick abandoned on a planet this time, and he's all beat up and, and just tore up, and he's got a whole bunch of alien critters on this planet that want to kill him and eat him, and not exactly in that order, but Riddick's a badass. He learns the ways of the planet and is surviving. Well, he comes across a station on the planet that has a beacon, and he decides he wants off the rock, so he activates the emergency beacon. But he gets more than he bargained for as two groups of individuals with ships answer the beacon. One is a group of individuals led by Santana, who wants his head in a box, and the other group is led by a man from Riddick's past. Riddick isn't a perfect sci-fi film, but it's a sci-fi film uh, that I enjoyed uh, quite a bit, actually. First off, the fact that it was on an alien planet. We're not talking sci-fi on Earth and whatever. No, they got a completely alien world on here, and I really like that. They did great with the cinematography to give you the feeling that this is a non-Earthly planet, okay? From all the creature designs that they had on there and the environments that they're in, and the way it's shot. The cinematography in this is actually very very good. I know most of it was green screen, but the way they did the visuals is great. They really made this big character Riddick seem very small on this planet that he's trying to survive on. So I love that bit of it. And that's pretty much the first act is a Riddick as trying to survive on this alien world. And I loved that bit. I could have almost had a whole film just of him doing that and trying to survive on this alien world. I thought that would have been interesting. But when the uh, two groups of individuals do show up, things do ramp up in the end action, as well as the uh, people in the film. Now, Santana, played by Jordi Mala, I, I thought was fun. He was great. He really gave a came across as this guy who works in the underbelly of the galaxy, uh, kind of the skeevy bounty hunter guy, and I really enjoyed his character. Now, in his group is also Diaz, played by Dave Bautista, and I will admit, Bautista was fun. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue, but when he does, it added to the scene, either comedy or just in, in general. He really did well for the role he was in. It's more of a supporting role than a lead role, but he, I just enjoyed his character. I really wanted to see this guy make it because, uh, you know, he's just a lot of fun. And now the other group that's led by the guy from Riddick's past had Katie Sackhoff's character Doll in it. Now that's D-A-H-L, not D-O-L-L. -L. And Katie Sackhoff is continuing that long line of fun, strong female characters in science fiction. I, she had a Vasquez feel to her from Aliens. She definitely had that feel, but there are so many bad guys, we don't get to see a whole lot of her. Well, you get to see more of her than you may have expected, but uh, I would have liked to see a lot more of her character uh, explored or whatnot, because she was pretty badass. Her and Bautista's character definitely were uh, really well done and, and interesting for the group of uh, bounty hunters, you know? So, I really liked those two characters especially. Vin Diesel is very comfortable in the Riddick role. You can tell he's just having a lot of fun with it. And the film is directed fairly well. It's directed by David uh, Toey, uh, who wrote Critters 2. So it can't be that bad, right? Uh, he's done the Pitch Black and the Chronicles of Riddick in this. So this is basically his franchise. And he hasn't really done much else. But I really liked this. He gave it an old 80s sci-fi feel. It, it really had that coming across through the dialogue, through the production design, and everything. Now, the dialogue does get a little cheesy and cliche in parts, okay? And it does get a bit predictable. And this is definitely a case where the trailer may have showed too much as far as some of the great shots, you know, as far as the action scenes go. But it didn't ruin the film for me. Overall, Riddick is an enjoyable sci-fi romp, which is at least worth a matinee. I gave it three stubs, okay? I think it'll worth your time if you're a fan of the franchise, if you're looking for a good science fiction film that doesn't have Marvel in the front of it, or if you're just looking for, uh, you know, you're a Vin Diesel fan, you'll definitely enjoy Riddick. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut, folks. Until next time, keep the tickets down.